Hey everybody, Maggie L. Ram here, and today I want to talk to you about entheogens. The word entheogen in Greek literally means generating the divine within. I've noticed lately that it's become like really popular and kind of sexy for witches to be into things like flying ointments and uh, other types of entheogens. While I myself have used these types of things, I also wanted to offer some advice on like alternative forms of entheogens and alternative ways to put yourself into like a trance-like state or to replicate the effects that entheogens could have on you. Now the benefits of using entheogens like flying ointments that have baneful herbs herbs or psilocybin, anything in that realm of different psychedelic drugs, is that they can give you instant gratification whenever it comes to doing spiritual searching or soul searching or, you know, if you're trying to really connect with the divine in a more like physical and uh, spiritual type of way. Like I said, it's one of the fastest ways to kind of transcend that physical mind and body connection. And I think I think that's great if that's something that you can work comfortably with and I think that, it, that these types of experiences really can benefit your practice spiritually by, you know, opening your mind up to things that are much larger than yourself. But I also know that some people might be more sensitive to certain substances than other people are, myself being one. And I will give you a very personal example. In the past, when probably between the ages of 18 to 20, 18 to 23, um, I experimented a lot with cannabis. I lived in California. I was, you know, really easy to get a hold of and that kind of thing. But I noticed that the older that I got, the more sensitive I became to it. And I started having uh, kind of negative side effects like rapid heartbeat and um, extreme anxiety. And I think because I am a person that suffers from uh, anxiety and depression, I do tend to have sensitivities whenever it comes to different substances, particularly entheogens. And this makes me think about uh, Joanna DeVoe's podcast I just listened to that she put out on entheogens. And she has some really great uh, information and anecdotal information um, whenever it comes to using uh, different types of entheogens for spiritual practice. So if you haven't listened to that already, head over to uh, her podcast, Hippie Witch, and give that a listen because it has some really great information. But like I said, I'm here to offer you some ideas on alternative entheogens, basically. So they say that entheogens in general are things that have a mind-altering effect on you. So it's arguable that things even like alcohol are considered an entheogen. So with that kind of mindset, this kind of opens you up to using different types of herbs and methods that can cause that mind-altering result. So what I'm going to tell you right now is more of uh, personal experience and personal anecdotes. So this is going to be about me. And by no ways am I any type of medical professional. And make sure that you do your own research and you do what's right for you whenever it comes to, you know, doing anything that has a mind-altering effect. Just disclaimer for you guys. So I first became really interested in entheogens a few years ago whenever I started uh, leaning more towards a traditional witchcraft uh, path. And like I said, whenever you do that, you get into like flying ointments and everything that's like super dark and super sexy about the craft. I even purchased a flying ointment online from a pretty well-known seller who will will remain nameless. And I just, I tried it out and I used it and it just really wasn't very effective to me. You know, I started wanting to get into like growing my own and making my own using these, you know, very incredibly dangerous herbs. And like the more I got into it and the more that I dealt like hands on with the plants and stuff themselves, the more I realized the dangers of dealing with those types of things. And like I said, because I have anxiety, I'm a little more sensitive to any type of substance. So I decided that I would just leave it alone for a while. And I just, I didn't think of it for a long time. So here recently, I wanted to kind of get back into that. You know, I was doing a lot more as far as my practice goes. I had the sense of renewal and I knew that I wanted an oil that I could use or something to apply to my body uh, before ritual. I wanted something that was very mild, but I could also use and feel a little bit differently with whenever I was doing ritual. And I wanted to use it in a way that would, instead of being like totally like mind altering, it would create kind of a trigger effect 
So whenever I would use it before ritual, it would help just to put me into the mindset because of the conditioning, really. So I did some research into different types of herbs and I came across uh, clary sage. If you've never worked with clary sage before, I highly recommend it as long as you know it's safe for you to use. It has, and for me, I, I had a discussion with a friend of mine about this too, and I feel like the creation of your own types of like flying ointments or uh, you know anointing oils that you're using for yourself, because they have that personal energy in them, they can be a little bit more effective than using something that someone else has created or something that is like commercially sold to people. So I I did a mixture of clary sage and damiana. Well, I had clary sage oil. I did a cold press oil with. Uh, Damiana leaves. I think I also used like some dragon's blood because I wanted it to have, I just wanted to kind of infuse it with a little bit of that energy too. So I, uh, whenever I did my cold press oil, I put the dragon's blood and Damiana together and just let that set like just a couple days. And this is by no means a recipe or anything I'm telling you to do. I'm just letting you know what I did. The first night I tried it, once I had strained it and added my clary sage oil into it and I made just a little bit, I put it in one of those little roller bottles and I rubbed it on and I put quite a bit on because I didn't feel like it would be like super potent and oh my gosh I was I put it on and got into bed and I was reading and all of a sudden I felt like really really fucking weird and I freaked out a little bit and it turns out that the mixture that I made for me personally and for my body chemistry was a lot more potent than something that had like all of these dangerous baneful herbs in it and that was really kind of a turning point for me whenever it came to entheogens when I found that I could have something uh, that was a lot safer, a lot more accessible too, and could get me just as close to that feeling of being with the divine than like legitimate like psilocybin or other types of uh, entheogen substances. So I just wanted to let you guys know this so that you understand if you're like me and you're a lot more sensitive to things, there are other ways uh, to bring about that mind-altering sensation. So that's why I wanted to make this, is to just show, you know, give my story and to show you who might be a little afraid of trying like actual entheogens or psilocybin or anything like that um, and let you know that there are other ways to achieving the altered mindset. And outside of the realm of herbs and topicals and that type of thing, there is always things like drumming, uh, erratic dancing, breath work. Uh, breath work is something that I've done a lot of lately and is something that has been amazing whenever it comes to achieving an altered state. And I found it a little bit difficult to learn about and I think because uh, breathwork is something that is used by like a vast amount of cultures um, all over the world and it's something that has also been used for quite a long time so it's kind of hard to uh, figure out exactly how to do it but I think with a little bit of research you could uh, find some different techniques on your own. Um, I follow something called the hissing breath. Okay, so the most recent method that I've been using actually came from a book called To Fly By Night um, that's edited by Veronica Kummer. And it's a collection of essays about hedge crossing and traditional witchcraft and uh, spirit flight, basically. The essay that I read that uh, taught me a method of breath work that really worked for me is uh, by Christopher Crittenden. And it was entitled, Knock and the Door Shall Be Open to You, Meditation and the Trance. And it's called the hissing of the serpent or the hissing breath. And like I said, these are techniques that have been used for a very long time. And it just goes to show you that there are loads of different ways to achieve an altered state of mind. Entheogens are just like kind of the fast track to achieving that altered state. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it was somewhat informative and not too all over the place for you. Uh, but I really did enjoy talking about it. And if you have any like questions or if you want to like discuss this uh, further, I would love to do that. So just put it in the comments below um, if you have questions or uh, comments or whatever like that. And I'll be sure to uh, read them all. And um, maybe it's something that we can talk about more in depth if you're wanting to. Uh, just let me know. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Love you. Bye.